doing? Are we ready? Okay, we are in Vero Beach, Florida. We are with Michael Timmons. We're at a fish farm and he's going to tell us all about it. Yeah, we're at a fish farm. It's a tilapia breeding farm. And uh, we produce little babies. And we sell the babies to other farmers. And then we keep some of the babies and we grow them out to nice big fish and sell them for food. Uh, behind me here, Okay, and how long have you been here? Uh, two years. Uh, we're on target to produce about uh, one or two million babies. And uh, we'll produce about 200,000 pounds a year of food size to love you. And how many people does it take to run this? Uh, about three. Three. Okay. Well, he's going to show us around. Plus, uh, plus Cameron. Oh, plus Cameron. <laughs> intensify our feeding operation, then we start to use oxygen just a little bit, and it's an ozo back up. So, got to have oxygen. I want you to speak up just a little, because you're so soft. Yeah, a lot of noise. So, inside, I shall go over this way. Okay. Inside, these are, uh, these are 15 foot diameter, 3 foot deep. Uh, there's four of those. Uh, that's where we have our breeding males and our one, this is the tank of replacement females for breeding. And then in tank two, the second tank, we're growing out babies. Uh, they're growing very fast. And then at the far end is where the breeding operation is. And that's a whole different operation. So. Oh. So we'll just take a look around at the frame. Ready to work, her? Are you ready Please to work, that. Cameron? Look here. Step up on the steps. Now in, uh, in January, they were about this big. In January, oh. they were about this big. So they grow very fast. So how long would it take for an average fish to be ready to be sold? You want to go from an inch to uh, 12 inches uh, is about uh, eight months. Oh, okay. Maybe six months. And do you have like distributors that you sell to or supermarkets? No, or? it's really easy to sell the, the, the live big fish. Uh, it's very easy to sell them with a shortage. Oh. So you, I could call any number of people like now. If, if I had 8,000 food fish, they'd be here tomorrow. And we, I don't think we've mentioned that this is tilapia. Yeah, it's Uh-huh. They're from the, these are the, the genus Oreochromus niloticus. And niloticus is a key there because Nile, they're from the Nile area, you know, in the Middle East. That's where they originated. So Jesus feeding the 5,000 and all these kind of things, those were probably tilapia. Oh. The, the species, you'll see it on the tombs of the Egyptian pharaohs and things. So it's been cultured for a long, long time. And how many fish would you say is in this tank? Oh, uh, there's only about 1,500 in there, but I, I could have 4,000 in there, but I, I keep the densities low right now because uh -huh. all of our backup systems are not present. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. 
bottom drain, the, the feces and solids go out, and they come down here into the first blue tank, and they settle out, and then the water's a little cleaner, and it goes to tank two here, and then it's a little cleaner, and goes to tank three, and then the water's pumped back to the four tanks. Oh. So it constantly turns over. Cycling. Yeah, and then here, in this tank, this water actually cycles through that device on the back, it's called a bead filter, and that takes out the really, really tiny, tiny, tiny solids. It's called, it's called, a, it's called a polisher. Polisher? And so what you see here, the color you see now is, is kind of, this is, for a fish system, this is, remember, this is called, this is your waste system in the water system. Right. Yeah. 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 Fish food. Oh, the bigger ones are in here. These are, these are males. Oh, these are males. Now, how do you set some? Say, what are you? There you want to see these Oh, damn. Look at these guys. Wow. <laughs> now, how big are these? Oh, uh, this is probably three pounds. Oh, oh my goodness, look at that. They, they will eat that. Wow. And they're hungry. And they're always hungry. Look at Ant feeding the fish. Yeah. So that's, uh, let's see. So it's, uh, this is about about 200 of these guys. Uh -huh. Now these... Uh -huh. Let me get a video of that. Okay. This is, says YY. What's YY? What so, so you're an XX? Yes. Cam and I are an XY? Yes. They're YY. Okay. So if you cross a YY with an XX, you get all XYs. So you get all genetic male offspring without uh -huh. any hormones. Oh, so, okay. So in the United States and most of the rest of the world, the, the babies, they feed them a little methyl testosterone uh -huh. to change the females into males. Because the males, the tilapia grow faster than the females. Uh -huh. So you're producing a food fish when they grow fast. Correct. Now in trout, for example, the females grow faster. Right. So do something similar and it'll change everybody into females. Wow. The original transgender. Wow, that's the original transgender. Yeah. Yeah, so that's so all standard up there. Wow, These guys are much more shy right now. Are they hanging? Yeah, they hang because we, we had to go in and get some to move them down. Oh, so they don't trust us. They don't trust us right now. <laughs> okay. These guys. We haven't taken them out for a long time, so they don't care. So, oh, whoa, yeah. Whoa, give us more feed, you know? Look at that. But it, tilapia are very, really smart. And as soon as you catch them once, oh, they, That's it, huh? Uh, and do you, like, use a big net? Is that how you bigger. catch them? Yeah. So what have we got here? Baby. Oh, there you go. See them? They're white. See them? Oh, they're tiny. Yeah, yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny. Those are about a week old. Oh, okay. So how many uh, eggs will a female usually lay? Um, well, you want to get them up to about uh, three quarters of a pound. Uh-huh. And then a three quarter pound, she'll lay uh, 500, 700 eggs. Oh, my word. That's the size of babies. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. They harvested they they had in seven days. Oh, okay. Catching seven days. Uh-huh. You know, like a trout. A trout in 60, a trout in 50 degree water takes 50 days. These guys do it in 70 days. Wow, they're super, super fast. So this is what I might give you to take up north. Oh, but yeah. You can put those in a bag and they'll last two days. They would stay in the bag for two oh, days? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. And camp is grown out. Now, yeah. Now, there, there's some bigger ones. I like to kind of stay down unless it's kind of heat. So how many? You've got one, two, well, three, four? There's uh, 5,000 in there. Okay, 5,000 in that one. Yeah, 1,000. The tennis is getting screwed. Yeah, it's getting shy right now. Michael, if someone was interested in doing this, what would you say a conservative ballpark figure would be for startup? Now, not including, like, assuming that's that they already have the so uh, land. Well, I tell them, okay, you, 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 you invest what you're willing to lose. So you, you have to tell them, okay, well, they have to think of it as a, a hobby. Okay, I go spend like horses. How much does it cost to be a horse hobby? Well, you could you could spend twenty, fifty thousand dollars a year on horses, right? Right. That's a hobby. Right. So I always thought, okay, what do you want to spend on your hobby? And then I can design a system for them to accomplish that. Uh, so you, I'll, you can I'll put your them, contact you, information. Yeah, so uh, it's, the easiest the easiest start is uh, ecornell.com slash fish. Okay. Or my email is M like Mike, B like boy, B like Tom or Timmons, the number three, the at symbol, Cornell dot edu. And okay. so if you reach out to me, I can help you. Good, good, we have, thank we have you. a lot of education in the field. Good. But the simple answer to your question is someone is willing to spend a thousand dollars, we can get into the fish tank. Really? Like this. So I think I one of these you could do everything. In two of these tanks and you could do everything. So uh, there's some what we call poly tank. Well actually uh -huh. those are poly tanks. Uh huh. Uh, those are like $200, $200 a piece. Okay. Okay. So a wow. couple of those and a filter and a little... Uh, You're ready to go, huh? Menu. You're a fish farmer. Of course, you can spend more than $200. Well, sure, sure. So these are the breeding tanks. This is all the breeding. Yeah. Oh, this is the breeding back here. This is the breeding. Okay. So, okay. so here there's, there's these poly tanks again. There's eight poly tanks, 500 gallons each. Mm -hmm. And uh, the females are kept separate from the males. And the, there'll be 60, 80 females in one of these tanks. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, every two weeks out of an eight week cycle, one of these tanks with 60 females will go down to the breeding section. And those 60 females will go into four, one of the four rectangular tanks, stay there for two weeks, and then they will have had their babies and hatched. So then we'll remove the females and put them back in their reconditioning tank so they can fatten up again. Because when they're in the breeding tanks, they don't eat. Oh, okay. So they use condition factor. And so you move them back, and then they're there for six weeks, two weeks, they go down, they come back, it's an eight week cycle. I see. Now there's see. eight breeding tanks down there. Uh -huh. So you mentioned, I mentioned they go into four tanks. Oh. So the next week, we move another breeding tank down to the other four. They're there for two weeks. And if we do that a week apart, see, we have, a, we have harvest every week. Correct. 
So that, that, that's what we got going. Okay. So they're down there. Uh huh. Reconditioned tank with 15 white females. See the algae? Yes. Yeah. Sunlight and warm water and nutrients generates algae. <laughs> algae. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing if you're trying to produce algae. Right. Yeah. Okay. Since there's 40 females yeah, in here. I don't see any cows. Oh, oh there's one, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. There's 40 of them, so they're hungry. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. YY males uh -huh. and there's 20 females and uh, they were put in here March 15th and we're going to harvest them on Saturday. April the second, yeah. Which is really cool. Wow. Really cool. So but when they're in here, it's like the males might eat. Now the reason we put them into rectangular tanks is the males, see they're still coming up. They like to, the male likes to hang out on a corner to protect his nesting area. So there's four corners, we put four males, and then they guard that space until the female is ready to lay eggs, and she'll come in and they do their courting, they bring some flowers, you know, <laughs> and then they have their romance. And, oh, there you go, huh? Just like all the others. That's right. them on Saturday too. Wow. So, so we're going to, so 20 females, so we might get 500 eggs of females, so we might get 10,000 oh babies out of it. And then what's the ratio of ones that survive? Oh, Is it they high? almost all survive. Okay, okay very like 99%. high. 99%. Yeah. These are YY, uh -huh. so we should get all male babies. Oh. That's the whole, the whole idea. So we don't yeah. They don't have to feed the, the babies any hormones to take them to grow out. Uh, in in uh, Europe, for example, they would not even accept any hormonal treated animals. U.S., you know. Mm -hmm. so, wow, so we've got 20. So between these two, we might get 20,000 babies. Oh, my goodness. They're, and they're worth, they're worth between 10 and 15 cents a piece in the U.S. Uh-huh. In, in Europe, they're worth 30 to 45 cents a piece. Wow. So we can ship directly from Miami to various points in Europe. And now, how do you do that? Like, put them in a the bag. They just, there's no special? Could, well, you put oxygen in there. Okay. The bag will be 
like this was the bag. Uh-huh. Put water here and uh -huh. saturate the water with oxygen. You fill the top of the bag with oxygen. Let's put a rubber band around it, put it in the box, and off it goes. Wow. So the fact that we don't use any hormones, we can ship really tiny babies. So their demand on oxygen is really, really low. Right. So the people who have to uh, treat with testosterone, they have to treat them for 25 days or so. So they're a much bigger animal. Uh-huh. So the, the ability to ship them internationally is very difficult. Wow. You can do it, but it's not. Yeah. Six water water milk. Uh-huh. And we're gonna harvest them a week from this Friday. Okay, you get eight. Yeah, so see then we're on the one week down there, one week here, uh -huh. one week there, one week there. So every week we're harvesting babies. Wow. So here, six YY males, 21 females, added the 21st of March, and we're going to harvest them on the 8th, which will be a week from this Friday. Uh -huh. And over here, oh yeah, this is good. So we put down another five YY males, 20 females, we're going to harvest those on 410. So eight, nine, ten. we're going to harvest them on Monday, a week from this Monday. Yeah. Okay, this is called a drum filter. If you come over this way, all the water with the manure comes inside this drum. And the drum has a 60 micron mesh. So the water that gets out has captured everything 60 micron and larger. And then the water keeps going around in a circle. And then as this, as this drum gets backed up with solids, there's a float switch in, and it'll turn, and the drum rotates, and the, and the solids are, are sprayed off into a tray that goes this way. And then that's what we use to create mineralized nutrients for our plants. I see. Okay, so then that can be used for hydro, uh, hydroponics, and it's all natural. Well, that's nice. Yeah, so that becomes the epitome of sustainability. Right, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so let's go down. And when we open that, it'll start draining that last two inches of water. Uh-huh. Okay. All the babies are gonna come. So it'll start running down this sluice. And we take the sluice, we put in this screen. Uh-huh. You catch the babies. Oh, I see. And then uh, that water goes outside and then we put it under the field. Oh, so okay. That, that's a really slick, works really slick. Just give them a the Some people actually catch the females when the eggs are, say, five days old. Uh-huh. So they catch her, and then they take the eggs out, and then they'll incubate the eggs. That's a lot of work. Yeah, that does seem like a lot of work. If I was a female, I'd like to save my baby. That's right. For as long as I could. So we're putting in some uh, inlets here so we ventilate. Oh, good. Uh huh. So. Look at this good, rich dirt. Oh, this was a river bottom. Oh river. my goodness. Yeah, this is like, it's like that's some of the highest organic matter in the whole state. Yeah. It's like potting soil. Oh my goodness. So this is where we're going to put our sun. This, this pipe will cut off right here. We have a sun. We can pump the water out. Out. And then this is our ponds. And
nice and breezy today. Yes, it's very breezy. Look at this. Yeah, so still that activity. Oh, right? yeah. They thought we were going to feed them. Oh. So there's two identical ponds, uh -huh. one with a liner and one without a liner. Okay. And uh, this is where we do grow out. And then we have to get them out of here and then we sell them. So then downstream of this, there's a U about the same size as this. you couldn't utilize like what you're not using for fish production yes. that you couldn't like put vegetable in yeah or uh, fruit trees or something like that or honey, yeah it was like, on the drawing board you know putting a whole series of fruiting crops and yeah. fruit trees and uh, vegetable production it's farming 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 is not easy no it's yeah. not it's hard work and small scale farming is hardly economical at all so right now the person I sold the property to, <laughs> she wants to do some of those things. So we're, we're getting ready to buy four beehives. See, I was thinking of beehives right down there. Yeah, beehives, yeah. and she also wants, uh, you know, a small flock of chickens. Good. She wants some uh, goats. Yeah. <laughs> she's not. She's from the city. What she doesn't understand, these all take labor. Labor is what kills you. Well, I saw, you know your, I saw your sign up there that yeah, said right. farm said, volunteers that's how I, wanted. That's how I pick people. Um, yeah. I said someone just called yesterday. Good. Uh, and then uh, another lady we're working on something. She's, she started a home school, so she's a high energy person and knows how to organize. In the pavilion up there, uh, very shortly, Friday noon until Saturday evening, we'll sell. Oh. So we'll sell our fish and my frozen seafood products and then vegetables. And, and then uh, once a month, I hope to have a music event. Well, nice. With the like, caterers and they come. Yeah. And fish and take for the kids. And, I 
Right, I, that's I, wonderful. I really want to do that. Yeah, I love your vision. Great a family type event. Right, right. So you come, you know, you have some nice, clean fun. Well, and it's so important to teach children how to do these things and where their food comes from. Where's your food come from? Right. It just doesn't come out of the grocery store. Right. How did it get there? Right. That's the one thing I always frustrate. People complain about farmers and like, oh, you're abusive to them. The farmer is the highest level of animal care because it's one, he usually likes his animals, but that, that's his taking, livelihood. <laughs> taking care of your animals, <laughs> then they take care of you. Right. If you don't take care of your animals, they're not going to take, they're not going to do well. If they don't do well, you can't do it cost effectively. So. Well, I'm from a long line of farmers and go. I appreciate, and it is hard work, but you know, seven days a week. Yep. Sure is. Sure yeah, I came is. from the dairy farms. Yeah, of oh, the cows. Yep. Twice a day. And then, then they invented three day of milk, three time a day of milking. Like, you I decided have... to go to college. <laughs> I didn't like morning milk. <laughs> well, Michael, thank you so much for showing us your operation and sharing you think, your vision with us. You like it? It's been so interesting. I think. five little babies Aww. and you take them up there to Tennessee and then you can grow them out in an aquarium. You only need like a 20 gallon aquarium. And we also homeschool. There you go. Yeah. Are you the best student in the class? He gets student of the month every week. Can you believe or every month? I, I can you believe history that? History is your number one subject. History? Yeah. What's your second best subject? President. Math. Okay. And what's your next favorite subject? I like mm -hmm. that. I did well in anything. Presidents. You like presidents? Have you studied the Civil War yet? Oh, yeah. We have a complete Civil War battle in our living room set up all the time. How old are you, Cameron? 16. You're going to be an old man. <laughs> You're going to be an old man, Cameron. Said Tom that I will. Sometime? Sometimes. Say goodbye, Cameron. Goodbye. Goodbye.